During the peak of the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom, artwork, fanfiction, animations, songs, cosplays, and fan-created content were pumped out by the second. There was no shortage of content to scroll through for anyone who was really into the franchise at the time. People started creating fully animated shorts, SFM animated series, role-playing games, chat rooms, memes, stories, and of course, comics. FNAF fan comics, and to an extent FNAF comic dubs, were extremely popular around this time. Whether it just be a one-page laugh or an entire series worth of content. These things were everywhere. While comic dubs these days are now made up of material that absolutely shouldn't be allowed on YouTube, in the olden days of YouTube, comic dubs were harmless fun that supported artists and engaged the community. These started getting the most popular around the release of FNAF 2, a notable example being a comic by M. Monsta called Out With The Old. Around the time of FNAF 2's release was also when the more character-centric side of the fandom began to develop, these people dedicating their time to creating headcanons and chips of the characters rather than theorizing and being scared of the games. One specific comic dub was so popular to the point that the series is still beloved by people today. On January 5th, 2017, an artist by the name of Gra Wolf Quinn started a comic that would go on to become arguably the most popular and most beloved FNAF fan comic of all time. Except for, uh, the other one. This comic, of course, being Springtrap and Delia. And yes, I say Delia, that is how it is pronounced, and I am aware that I probably broke half of your minds, was a series centering around a 14-year-old girl who finds Springtrap at the burnt down Fazbear's Fred's location and takes him home to live with her after the two become best friends. The characters share somewhat of a father-daughter relationship. However, as you can imagine, things aren't as bright as they seem, as Springtrap is definitely not the first person you'd choose to have as a roommate. The comic was beloved for its original characters and spin on the already fan-favorite Springtrap, with this version of Springtrap still being considered iconic and beloved today. The comic is basically finished with only a few missing pages, as Growlwolf Quinn had cancelled the project. That being said, it still has a pretty conclusive storyline. After the comic's cancellation, people harassed the creator for not continuing it, and after the harassment got too unbearable, Quinn disappeared from the internet. They briefly came back a few times, but not long enough for them to be considered active. For lack of a better term, Quinn disappeared off the face of the earth. A tragic story of an artist being pressured into drawing things they didn't want to anymore, and being ran off the internet by their own toxic fan base. At least, that's what people want you to think. See, in reality, Quinn, who I am ashamed to share a name with, let me get that out of the way because I know I'm going to get so many comments about this and I literally don't care, had only ever faced minor backlash because of their art. In reality, most of the harassment in the story came from Quinn themselves, both the strangers and to their closest friends, who they would often guilt trip, to a point where it seemed that they really weren't their friends and rather tools Quinn could use to their advantage. But both of these things are small in scale compared to the horrors that were actually going down behind closed doors. I was originally going to make this video solely about recapping the events of the comic and going through its history, but throughout my search I got into contact with some people who were very close to Quinn in 2017, who will remain anonymous, who had an entire Google Drive compiled of absolutely disgusting screenshots showcasing Quinn's true nature at the time. The information we know now puts the entire comic in an entirely different light, and turns what many people found as a charming interpretation of Springtrap and a positive staple of their childhood into a disgusting, sickening story that disturbs any sane person, and not in the good, spooky fun. Way. The majority of people probably don't know what I'm referring to and are anxious to find out, and oh yes, I promise I will get there. But the original script was entirely revolved around recapping the events of the actual comic itself. As such, I'm going to be primarily splitting this video up into two sections. One being a less serious, goofy trip down memory lane, going over the comic and its events, and the other being primarily about the actions of the creator and how they've affected the comic. During the recap, I'll also be keeping track of all of the red flags shown in the actual comic itself with a useful red flag counter. So, that all being said, Let's travel back in time to January 5th, 2017, and look through the events, the rise, the fall, the impact, and the disgusting truth surrounding Springtrap and Delia. This segment of the video is entirely dedicated to summarizing the events of the comic Springtrap and Delia. If you already remember what happens in this comic, or just want to skip to the next section for any reason, you can skip to this timestamp. The comic Springtrap and Delia begins with Delia having a nightmare and anxiously wandering around her dark house upon waking up. We see a figure following her as if she's being hunted. The figure reveals itself to be Springtrap, jumping out at the girl. However, she shows no fear, instead welcoming him familiarly. Her inner monologue explains to us that the two are best friends, and Springtrap lives with her and he has for months now, at least ever since she stole him from Freddy Fazbear's. She doesn't know much about him other than where she got him and his name, and he refuses to tell her anything about himself. 
Delia mentions that she had a nightmare with Springtrap in it, to which Springtrap asks her to tell him about it, getting progressively more forceful and aggressive. This is the first sign that Delia is in a bad relationship, and as such, the first red flag on our counter. Delia stands her ground, saying she'll only tell him if he tells her his secrets. Immediately, Springtrap says no, and instead changes the topic by making her cookies and tucking her into bed. This is a behavior very often exhibited by Springtrap throughout the comic, doing something to make Delia upset, and then immediately love-bombing her and making pancakes or popcorn, rather than addressing his mistakes. We'll add a second red flag as this is a pretty common manipulation tactic. After tucking Delia into bed, he runs into Nick, Delia's single father, who distrusts him greatly. As such, Springtrap dislikes him as well. The two have a slight, silent altercation, and Nick goes to check on his daughter. In the morning, Springtrap makes pancakes. He does this a lot. Get used to it. Pancakes. Nick is distrustful of Springtrap, wondering how he knows how to cook, and asks if there's a human inside that fluffy bunny costume. Springtrap responds by showing him the inside of his costume head, which is hollow and empty aside from a few wires. Delia goes to sit down and explains to the audience that Springtrap's suit wasn't always empty. When she first found him around six months ago, there was something in the suit, what Springtrap said was a fake corpse. We see a flashback to Springtrap and Delia's first interaction briefly before it cuts to the present, where Springtrap gives her pancakes. Nick heads off to work, and Springtrap, albeit cheekily, says he'll take care of Delia. Don't worry, Nick. They'll be just fine. There's no need to worry about us. Before Nick leaves, the home phone starts to ring. He picks up the phone as someone named Harry responds, who asks if he can come over and hang out with Delia, who's very excited about this. Springtrap seems very overprotective when he realizes Delia has a crush on him. We see that Springtrap is very jealous to an obsessive amount and doesn't want to be alone or apart from Delia. He is incredibly reliant on her and is extremely envious of every single person in her life. This is obviously a very unhealthy behavior that he consistently exhibits and becomes incredibly disturbing when you take into account how this character trait of his is very prominent throughout the messages and chat logs we'll be looking at later. Harry comes over, and immediately Springtrap makes a giant ruckus, acting aloof and trying to make his presence incredibly known after Delia deliberately tells him to stay hidden. This is one of many times he goes against her wishes. He acts incredibly snarky, falling to the ground and refusing to get up or go anywhere. Delia very quickly gives in to him, saying it's better to give in to what Springtrap wants than fight him. A rather disturbing line of dialogue, insinuating that this has happened many times before. Delia, after giving in to Springtrap, introduces him to Harry, who seems very confused. He starts talking about rumors and asks Springtrap if he's a dead kid, seeing as the other robots were rumored to be possessed by them. Delia says Springtrap doesn't like questions, to which Harry says he's likely hiding something if he won't answer them. Springtrap gets incredibly defensive and pesters Delia, asking if she trusts him rather creepily. Right, Delilah? You trust me, right? Ugh, Springtrap, I'm not dealing with this anymore! She doesn't respond, instead pushing him away and going off with Harry. Harry asks if Springtrap has ever hurt her, to which she looks away, visibly upset, and explains that it was only once, months ago when she asked too many questions. I shouldn't have to explain why this is concerning. We're shown a brief flashback to whenever Springtrap had hurt Delia. In the flashback, Delia is excitedly asking Springtrap a multitude of questions in rapid succession, with a childlike innocence to which Springtrap progressively gets more and more agitated. When she continues to press him, he grabs her by the arm, nearly crushing it, saying that she will learn to listen to him. It's apparent by now that this isn't by any means a good relationship for either of them. Springtrap immediately feels bad in the flashback, and we go back to the present. Delia explained that it's okay because it was her fault and he apologized a lot afterwards. She is actively being manipulated and guilted by Springtrap to the point where she admits fault for his poor and unacceptable behavior. Harry, like any reasonable person, says he shouldn't have hurt her. He offers to spend a lot more time with Delia, as it isn't good to be hanging out with someone like Springtrap all the time, even offering for her to go over to his house right now, which she happily agrees. Springtrap overhears this and is not having it. Delia and Harry start to head to his house, but Springtrap barges in, hiding his anger through a smile. Delia explains that they're going to go play video games at Harry's house. Springtrap emptily says he hopes she has fun, and that he needs to talk to Harry for a moment, alone. Springtrap confronts Harry, menacingly exclaiming to him that he should know exactly who he is and what he's capable of before he does anything stupid. Springtrap starts getting into the lore about this universe's Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. He begins talking about the kids, telling Harry that the rumors are true, and that the kids who died there really were trapped in the animatronic suits. 
Harry assumes that Springtrap is about to reveal that he's actually one of the kids, to which Springtrap sinisterly reveals that instead, he's the one who killed them. Despite later on in the story claiming to have felt bad for this horrid action, here he seems almost proud, wearing his murders as a badge and using them to make Harry afraid of him. He threatens Harry properly, saying he's not above killing more. However, he doesn't want Delia to be upset with him, so he decides to let Harry live, even if he does still really want to kill him. He then says that he might as well say goodbye to Delia, because all she will ever want and need is Springtrap. Yeah, um, l l let's just add, like, a whole five red flags there for each dead child, and another red flag for that last line. Ugh, creepy. Harry, rightfully so, threatens Springtrap back, saying that he'll tell Delia exactly who Springtrap really is. Springtrap only laughs at him, saying that she'd never believe him, especially when he has no proof. However, Harry pulls a Judy Hops and pulls out his phone to reveal that he had recorded the entire conversation. He essentially blackmails Springtrap, explaining that he won't show Delia the recording as long as he proves he's not dangerous, and leaves the two of them alone. Springtrap claims that he could never hurt Delia, but Harry tells him that they both know he will, intentionally or not, and that it's only a matter of time. Harry is very insightful about Springtrap and Delia's relationship, despite only having known about Springtrap's existence for a few minutes at this point in time. This shows us just how painfully obvious it is that Springtrap is not good for Delia in any way. And it seems that everyone else in the story aside from Delia herself thinks that as well. One more red flag. Harry leaves after this, and Springtrap rushes out to wordly pry at Delia, asking if she'll be back soon. He is incredibly dependent on her, which is shown heavily in these few scenes. Delia hugs him affectionately, reassuring him that she'll be back in a few hours. Springtrap starts waiting for her in the house as if he were a sad dog waiting for their owner to return. Over time, we see the extent of just how unstable Springtrap is without Delia around, as he starts to hear many voices calling his name and getting into his head. We discover that these are the voices of his victims, voices that he hears often. The souls explain to him that he killed Delia and that her blood is all over his hands. He insists he didn't, but when he looks at his hands, there's blood on them. <laughs> I, I, this isn't in the script, but I, I really thought that I would put this in. Um, in the comic dub, the, the, like, the most popular comic dub of this series on YouTube, this scene, like, this is where the second part cuts off. So it, <laughs> it's like this really intense scene, and then it just cuts into royalty free. She cried. You killed her anyway. Springtrap starts to freak out, saying his love should have saved her, that that should have been enough. The souls torment him, degrading him and saying that no one will ever love him. This is one of the scenes that seems to be trying very, very hard to make the reader feel bad for Springtrap, as he is constantly being berated and hurt here. Which is kind of a strange narrative decision, seeing as this man is a child murderer who is actively manipulating a 14-year-old girl, but whatever. The souls continue asking him questions, tormenting him while he freaks out like the poor widow victim he is. He says he just wanted a friend before waking up to Delia calling his name. Springtrap is ecstatic to see her, hugging her tightly and sobbing. Delilah apologizes for being out so late, explaining that she had so much fun with Harry and she spaced out and forgot to go home. She tells Springtrap how much fun she had, however Springtrap looks even more distressed than before. He gets upset at the fact that Delia forgot about her, and Delia apologizes to him, telling him that he handled himself really well while she was gone. He jolts up and starts to yell at Delia after she says that he handled things just fine, as he had a very rough time while she was gone, hallucinating, having nightmares, and writing on the walls. You know, classic mental breakdown stuff. Delia starts to seem noticeably uncomfortable and even scared, and Springtrap says this is something he will never let happen again. He reaches his fist up to punch Delia, saying she needs to learn a lesson, to which she's rightfully horrified. He starts to hesitate, saying that he hates the way that Delia looks at him, innocent and scared, before slinking away and having a breakdown. He starts freaking the fuck out, talking about how he shouldn't even think about hurting her, immediately pulling her into a hug without waiting for her permission. He says that they'll just make popcorn and watch a movie, and everything will be okay, once again attempting to distract Delia from his poor behavior. However, she's still hesitant around him, trying to make sure he's okay and safe to be around first. She reassures him that he's not crazy, and Springtrap asks Delia if she wants him to leave. 
she should have said yes, but she rejects the offer, saying she doesn't care if he's Satan himself because he's the first and only person to ever care about her. She states that their friendship is weird, but he's the best friend she's ever had, and she doesn't want him to leave. She then starts to reassure him, saying that it was her fault, which it absolutely wasn't, and that he was reasonable for being that upset, as she was gone for nine whole hours. She then says that all he did when she got back was get a little angry, despite him literally almost hitting her, and saying that it's an achievement that he was able to get through the torment. She is unknowingly being manipulated and is enabling Springtrap to believe that he's always in the right. She says that nothing could make her hate him, unless he was like a dead serial killer, but obviously he's not. Springtrap is worried. He starts to turn this heartfelt conversation into a reason to further manipulate Delia, telling her that because he wants what's best for her, he wants her to stop hanging out with Harry, because he's a teenage boy and probably doesn't have her best interests in mind, and that she should stay with him instead. She half-heartedly says alright, picking up on something being wrong. Springtrap tucks her into bed and asks if anything is wrong, to which she dismisses him. She hears Nick, her father, return home, and immediately perks up, excited. To which Springtrap tells her he'll go get him, because Delia just settled into bed. As usual, and justifiably, she's suspicious, but lets him go regardless. Springtrap goes out to talk to Nick, telling him that Delia was at Harry's house all day. Nick is excited and happy about this, to which Springtrap takes it personally. Nick wants her to get along with other humans her age and hang out with people other than just Springtrap. Nick says he wants to talk to Delia, pushing Springtrap aside to talk to his daughter. Springtrap looks noticeably upset before talking to a picture of Delia, saying he won't let anyone hurt her, even if it meant killing anyone else for her. Nothing can take her away from him. <laughs> Don't you worry, Delilah. Let anything hurt you, even if I have to kill that brat Harry for it. Heck, I'd kill anyone at all just for you. You're a special girl, you know. Even if the worst comes, I don't care. Nothing can take you away from me. Nothing. This is a very concerning sign of an abusive relationship, Springtrap being unbelievably possessive and controlling. This is the end of Arc 1. Arc 2 starts a few weeks later, where we see Springtrap try and creep up on Delia to scare her, similar to the beginning of the first act. However, she knows he's there. We find out that they're playing hide-and-seek here. The telephone rings and it's her dad. She tells him Springtrap's been very sweet to her lately, to which Springtrap appears happy. However, as Delia is on the phone, Springtrap starts hearing the souls tormenting him again, and starts to freak out. Delia goes over to comfort him, and they continue their game of hide-and-seek. Delia explains that hide-and-seek is a game that she plays with Springtrap often. Springtrap starts to argue with the souls as he goes to search for Delia, as he's seeking, trying to scare her. To which he does, making Delia visibly very upset and scared. She says he thought he was actually going to hurt her. To which Springtrap, as always, freaks out, demanding she tells him about her nightmares, as she's been having a lot of them as of lately. Springtrap snaps at her again, grabbing her and saying she'd better tell him, to which Nick coming home interrupts them. Delia gets mad at Springtrap, and then leaves Springtrap on his lonesome to have another argument with the souls. Later, Springtrap walks in on Delia and her father having a conversation about him. He says he feels like Springtrap is hiding something and that they should be more careful. Delia puts up a very small fight before quickly agreeing, saying he's likely right. Springtrap starts working extra hard by doing acts of kindness to get Delia to forgive him. He tucks her into bed and we finally see one of Delia's nightmares. She wakes up in a strange place and sees one of the souls of the dead children, who tells her to be quiet or else he'll hear her. Delia wonders who he is referring to, and soon after we see Springtrap, who keeps looking around. Delia runs to him assuming that he's the friendly Springtrap that she knows, however in her dream he's very violent and is about to kill her. The soul of Bonnie confronts Springtrap, who pesters them, saying it's fun to kill the children. He leaves Delia and the other soul. The soul tells Delia to leave, but she wants to go and help Bonnie. She's still convinced that he's just playing, and Delia goes to put a stop to it before he has a breakdown. We see more shots of the building that they're in, and it becomes more apparent that they're at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, or at least a building resembling it. 
When Delara catches up to Springtrap, he grabs her, and we get a much more detailed look at this version of Springtrap's design. This character is referred to as Nightmare Springtrap, and is characterized by his glowing pink eyes and sharp teeth. Springtrap takes Delia to a back room, where he shows her the empty suits of the other animatronics, and as such, the other victims. He explains that he looks after them and makes them happy, and that here there is no pain and suffering only everlasting joy. He explains that there are no suits left, as he's already stuffed all the other kids, and as such, he's going to stuff Delia in his own suit with him. He then opens up his face to reveal the purple corpse inside of him, which scares Delia into waking up. Springtrap immediately tries to console her, but she's rightfully rather scared of him. The commotion wakes up Nick, who assumes that Springtrap is harming Delia, but realizes that Springtrap isn't going to hurt her upon hearing the two converse through the door. Springtrap tries his hardest to comfort Delia rather frantically, showing signs of his increasing anxiety at the thought of Delia being scared of him. He genuinely seems rather reasonable here, calmly telling Delia that she doesn't have to tell him about the dream, but he'd at least like to know how to make her feel better. They leave the room to talk about it while Springtrap gives her cookies. Cookies. Despite Springtrap acting calm at first, he continues to ask Delia about the contents of her dream, to which she says it was about his past. This immediately causes Springtrap to get incredibly paranoid, and Delia asks him to tell her his secrets, but instead he refuses, yelling at her, not wanting their friendship to end. He then says he will never let her go even if she hates him. He immediately takes it back, but not before Nick slips in and starts beating the shit out of Springtrap, justifiably so. Delia tries to break up the fight, and defends the both of them, telling Springtrap to calm down, and encourages them to talk it out. Springtrap instead threatens to kill Nick, and subtly reveals that he used to feel pain despite everyone being under the impression that he is entirely a robot. Nick says he thinks he's hiding something big and evil, and that he doesn't think Springtrap is Delia's friend. Springtrap says he'd like to talk to Nick alone. Not a good sign. Once the two are alone, Springtrap screams at him, insisting that Delia is his friend, and that he's never going to give her up. He says that he's trying to be good for Delia, as she's the first person to care about him, and that he's sorry and is begging to stay there. Springtrap continuously attempts to guilt Nick into letting him stay, and after a bit, Nick agrees. However, he says one more outburst, and Springtrap is out. Nick leaves, but not before telling Springtrap that he doesn't think there's any hope for him. The souls start tormenting Springtrap again as per usual. Springtrap admits to the souls that Nick is right, and the souls are surprised at this. They aren't used to him admitting to his faults, and neither is he. Springtrap admits that he doesn't know how to break out of his old habits, despite wanting to. He describes his intense fear of abandonment and losing control, and how he wants to change and break free from his old ways so that he can be a real friend to Delia. Springtrap ponders for a while. He doesn't know who to turn to, but he needs someone else or he won't be able to improve. He soon realizes he knows the perfect person to help, this being Harry, Delia's friend from earlier. Springtrap stalks over to Harry's house, somehow being able to stealthily make his way up to Harry's bedroom without alerting anyone else. He wakes Harry up, and he's surprisingly okay with this giant murder robot being in his house and pretty much in his bed. We then flash back to 10 minutes later, where Springtrap essentially vents to Harry nonstop. Harry tells Springtrap that Delia actually thinks very highly of him, often describing him to Harry as silly and cool. He agrees to help Springtrap under one condition, being that Springtrap tells Delia about his big secret. Springtrap proceeds to beg Harry not to make him, pleading for another way. When Harry's brother, Matt, wakes up from the commotion and spots Harry with Springtrap. Immediately, Matt recognizes him as being one of the animatronics from Freddy Fazbear's. All of this causes Harry's mother to wake up as well, and Springtrap, frantically wondering what to do in the situation, tries to charm her. Why, hello? Okay. He ends up just seeming really creepy, and Harry's mom demands to know the situation, to which Harry explains literally everything, from Springtrap being the one to have murdered the children at Freddy's, to him living with Delia, to him coming over to Harry's house and asking for help. After hearing all of this, Harry's mother is also surprisingly okay with all of this. The same with Matt. Harry brings Springtrap back up to continue their therapy session, and once again he tries to convince Springtrap to tell Delia about his true identity. He explains to her that Delia deserves to know, and that if she leaves, that's her choice. Springtrap starts venting again about how afraid he is to lose Delia, saying that she's the first thing he's done right. This conversation leads into Springtrap explaining his real motive for killing the kids at Freddy Fazbear's. He explains that he killed them because he wanted a family. Yes, that is his real reason for murdering innocent children. 
This also establishes this version of Springtrap as his own interpretation, as the character of William Afton had a very different motive for the missing children's incident. Springtrap continues to go in depth about his backstory, talking about how his applications for adoption were always denied, and that working at Freddy Fazbear's was a fantastic opportunity for him. He would work as a costume character in order to be with children, and he loved them. One day, the Springlocks in another costume failed, and one of his co-workers were crushed inside the suit. Springtrap was horrified at this, and he was forced to transfer to the night shift, where he got lonely without the children. The suit that his co-worker died in began moving during these night shifts, which gave Springtrap an idea as to how he could make a family. Springtrap stuffed the children inside these suits so that they could stay with him forever. He explains that he regretted it as soon as it happened, and nothing could make him feel any better. He's hated himself from that point on. Harry doesn't really comment on this much, instead just repeating the fact that he needs to tell Delia the truth, and that he can still make things right. Springtrap sighs, giving in, and goes back home to check on Delia. The next morning, he makes her pancakes, telling her that they should invite Harry over. Delia is confused as to why Springtrap had a sudden change of heart, and he explains to her that he went to visit Harry the night before, and that they're friends now. Delia finds this a little weird, but doesn't mind too much, as she enjoys hanging out with Harry. Over the phone, Harry assumes that Springtrap told Delia about his secret already, and as such, he almost reveals the truth. But but not before Springtrap is able to take the phone and tell him he hasn't confessed to her yet. He says that he'll tell her soon, giving the phone back to Delia. Harry asks her and Springtrap to come over and play video games, so they go over to visit. Harry tries to teach Springtrap how to play video games, specifically Halo if I remember correctly. Springtrap creeps Harry's brother Matt into getting them snacks, to which Matt calls him murdery. This makes Delia wonder if he's the murderer who killed the kids at Freddy Fazbear's, however she quickly dismisses it. The three go on to have fun playing games, and Delia explains that Springtrap's much better at hiding seek than he is at video games. As such, the three of them decide to play that instead. Harry and Delia go to hide while Springtrap is the seeker as per usual. Harry and Delia hide in the basement and bundle for warmth, getting flustered. Springtrap discovers the two of them in the basement, and they make a run for it. They hide somewhere else, but reveal their location when Harry makes a noise, and Springtrap finds them, chasing them once again. Springtrap jumps at Delia and catches her, and she seems as if she's about to start freaking out again. But instead, she laughs and says she had so much fun. They continue to spend hours at Harry's house, and share a lot of genuinely rather sweet exchanges. When they get home, Springtrap tucks her into bed and makes cookies. And things seem like they're actually looking up. Springtrap seems a lot less unpredictable and much more happy. We then cut to a glimpse of Nick at his job, who seems stressed out and worried about Delia, especially regarding her relationship with Springtrap. He's afraid to step in, however, as Delia seems to be the happiest she's ever been. Nick then receives a call from Harry's mom, who tells him the truth about Springtrap. Nick leaves his work for the rest of the night, as he believes Delia is in serious trouble. When he gets home, Springtrap grabs him and asks him if anything is wrong, while Delia sleeps. Nick anxiously says it's fine. He goes to see if Delia is okay, but Springtrap keeps following him, stating that he doesn't trust Nick. He tells Nick that he thinks that he's going to tell Delia lies about him, to which Nick reveals that he knows that Springtrap is a murderer. Springtrap responds to this by grabbing Nick by the neck and shoving him against the wall, yelling at him. He threatens Nick, saying that if he tells Delia or takes her out of his sight, he'll kill the both of them, killing Delia first and forcing Nick to watch. If you tell Delia or take her out of my sight or do anything funny, I swear, I, I will kill you both. I'll kill her first so you can watch, and then I'll kill you. I swear I will. Hi guys. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Nick is horrified and gives in at his strength, reassuring Springtrap that he won't take Delia away from him. Despite being extremely threatening towards the other man, Springtrap looks more anxious than he does angry or upset. Nick goes back into Delia's room to spend some quality time with her, and the two of them go out for ice cream. Springtrap feels guilty, saying that he was only bluffing to scare Nick, as he would never actually think of hurting Delia. We then get another scene of the souls tormenting Springtrap before he sees Nick and Delia heading out. He asks where they're going and if he can come with. Delia convinces Nick to let him come, however, the entire time he's glaring at Nick. When they get home, Delia gets ready to go to bed, and Springtrap attempts to apologize to Nick. Nick isn't having it, and he goes off on Springtrap. He says if Springtrap really wanted forgiveness, he would leave him and Delia alone forever. Springtrap doesn't seem to yell or threaten him this time, instead just getting sad. We enter a sequence that takes place in Nick's dreams, back to when Delia was around nine. Delia tells her father that she's really upset as she got bullied at school. Nick offers to get her ice cream as he's been working really hard for the both of them so they could afford more. Nick tells her she's the best daughter ever. It's a sweet moment, however, Delia gets upset, revealing that her mother didn't think she was the best daughter in the world the way Nick did. 
At this, Springtrap enters Nick's dream, tormenting him and telling him that he's a terrible father, telling him that he never made enough time for her and let Springtrap into her life because she was lonely and needed a friend. He was a failure. Springtrap says Nick is only going to watch as Springtrap hurts her. The Springtrap in the dreams, Nightmare Springtrap, encourages Nick to fight back, as he's going to kill them both regardless of whether or not Nick tries to step in. In the dream, Springtrap wishes for Delia to stay with him forever, and as such, kills her. I believe this is where arc three, the final arc, begins. We cut to a week later. We see a scene with Springtrap, who seems to be having somewhat of a normal conversation with one of the souls, where he talks about how he enjoys taking care of Delia. Springtrap makes his famous pancakes, beaming at the sight of Delia. She wonders if it's safe to be around him right now, as he's been acting weird as of lately. Is he safe to be around right now? He's been acting weird lately. He calls her cute, which is... weird. Delia states that she thinks he's safe right now, but she looks very anxious still. Springtrap reveals to the audience that Nick has been taking Delia to work lately. Delia also notes that Springtrap and Nick have been acting very strange around each other. When Delia leaves, Springtrap immediately starts sobbing because of how codependent he is. But then here's a knock at the door. Springtrap opens it to be greeted by Harry, who says he figured Springtrap needed some company, revealing that Delia told him to come over. Harry once again tells Springtrap that he needs to tell Delia soon, as there's only one week left of summer, and that if he doesn't, he or Nick will tell him. Springtrap thinks for a second that Harry is the one who told Nick, but Harry informs him that it was his mom. Your mother. We then cut to Nick and Delia. Delia seems upset at the fact that her father has been asking so many questions. He asks her if he's ever hurt her, to which she says no, and he feels suspicious. He breaks into tears during this, saying he should have been a better father. Delia says that sometimes she doesn't feel safe around Springtrap. She remembers and recaps a time when she found him in the kitchen with a knife, staring at it, seeming super anxious when she approached him about it, claiming the knife fell out and he was just putting it back. He told her to go back to bed, but his eyes were crazed. Back with Springtrap, he says goodbye to Harry. As he leaves, Springtrap decides he wants to delete Harry's recording. He explains that even though he likes Harry now, he doesn't like feeling like he's on a leash. He's paranoid and feels as if he's losing his sense of control, specifically his control over Delia. Later when Delia returns home, Springtrap keeps acting strange around her. And once again, he calls her cute. Okay, Springtrap. That night, Springtrap breaks into Harry's house once again, this time with the intent to delete the video on his phone. He gets his hands on it, but not before Harry wakes up at his anger with the foreign technology. Harry attempts to reason with him, once again trying to convince him to simply tell Delia the truth. Now, this is where the comic splits, specifically splitting into two different endings. These endings are referred to as the light ending and the dark ending, or otherwise the good ending and the bad ending. The comic's creator stated that whichever ending is canon is completely up to fan interpretation. There's also a third ending that the comic creator wrote, but I'm pretty certain that one isn't canon at all. Let's begin with the light ending. Remember this confrontation in Harry's room, however, as this is where the dark ending will pick up. In the light ending, Springtrap seems upset, but Harry offers to tell Delia with Springtrap so he doesn't have to face it alone. The pair agree to tell Delia the morning after. Next morning, Harry comes over to his house, and Springtrap seems super anxious. He says he can't do it, freaking out and telling Harry to do it for him. However, Harry continues to try and convince him. Delia tells them to stop pressuring him and consoles Springtrap, saying she won't hate him and that she just wants him to tell her. This eases him a little, and he starts by telling her that he always wanted to be friends with her, and that he was just horrified of losing her, before he starts to explain that he's not a fluffy bunny robot, but instead a man whose soul is trapped inside the suit. Okay. The truth is, I'm not a cute bunny. I'm... just a man whose soul is trapped in here. And I'm a man who killed six children at Freddy Fazbear's, where I used to work killed them because I knew I could keep them in those animatronics forever. And I thought I could take care of them better than their parents did. When I was alive, I dealt with problems. My psychiatrist even told me he believed I was seriously dangerous, but I didn't want to believe him. I wanted kids, but couldn't adopt because of it. It's not an excuse, though. It's not an excuse for how I treated you, and how I took them away from their loving families. <sighs> so there. Now you know. And I realize it was stupid trying to be something I wasn't just so... So a kid could see me as their dad. I'm so sorry. Please, please forgive me. Please don't touch me. 
sorry. You know what? I'll just leave. He reaches out for Delia, to which she asks him not to touch her. Springtrap looks defeated, saying he's just going to leave. Acting all, <laughs> guess I deserved it. He says that even if he won't be okay, it's the right thing to do. Like, yeah, about fucking time, Springtrap. Harry offers for Springtrap to stay with him instead, explaining that his uncle is a therapist, and that they can try and get Springtrap some help. He also explains that he doesn't want Springtrap doing anything drastic to himself. Springtrap is hesitant at first, but then agrees, and Harry takes him through the back door so no one sees them. Springtrap looks back at Delia, who is in her father's arms, while looking up at Springtrap with angry eyes. One of the souls says that even though they don't forgive Springtrap, it was brave of him to tell Delia the truth. Delia and her father have a heart to heart, and Nick says he should have been a better father to her. This is where the light ending ends, with Springtrap leaving to live with Harry and get him professional help, and Delia being rid of Springtrap, presumably for good. Now let's circle back to the confrontation in Harry's room, as it's time for the dark ending. Harry offers to tell her together again, but this time Springtrap refuses, saying that he's going to tell her himself. He says he won't snap this time and ominously thanks Harry. Springtrap goes back to Delia's house and grabs a knife, saying that this time he won't chicken out, implying that this is what he was trying to do the last time he had the knife. He says that it has to work, and that Delia will love it, and that they'll be a happy family, and maybe even the other kids will warm up to him. He starts to have doubts, but eventually settles on his decision. Delia walks in, asking him what's going on and why he stares at that knife all the time. She just wants an explanation. Springtrap tells her that he has to do this, freaking out, before getting it over with, telling Delia rather nonchalantly that he's planning to kill her. I'm planning to kill you, sweetie. He explains he kept staring at the knife thinking about whether or not he should do it. This is where he reveals to her that he's the Fazbear Killer, and that Delia is going to be joining his family. I keep staring at the knife, thinking about whether or not I should do it. But this time I've decided... I will. I want to keep you forever, you see. And the only way is to trap your soul within me. I know it will work, because it's worked for me six times before. And yes, I'm the Fazbear Killer! And you're going to be joining my little family. Won't that be so nice? Delia asks him if he's joking, but he says he isn't, calling her darling and asking if she wants to be with him forever. Delia attempts to run away and Springtrap grabs her. She screams for her dad. This is the last we see of the dark ending as the comic was canceled around this time, but we do know that Delia gets away, if I remember correctly. This is where the dark ending ends, but there is still a third ending that the creator wrote, but never drew out, describing how Springtrap catches and kills Delia. And that's a wrap on Springtrap and Delia, a relatively sweet comic that, while being very suspicious at times, is still a fun read. Now, it's no secret that the relationship between Springtrap and Delia is absurdly unhealthy. I mean, 31 red flags is nothing to scoff at. Springtrap, in his attempt to keep the only friend he's ever had, constantly manipulates and threatens the 14-year-old girl throughout the entire comic, all while trying to be a father figure to her. However, because Springtrap is, well, Springtrap, this is pretty in character and so serves as an accurate interpretation of the character considering how awful of a father he is in canon. And it's treated like a bad thing, right? Right? Well, sometimes, but the comic also really wants you to feel bad for Springtrap throughout the content, despite the fact that he is a manipulative child murderer, such as the scene where he has a mental breakdown when Delia leaves him alone in the house, or the scene at the end of the light ending, where he has to leave Delia. The reason for this is likely because Quinn has gone on record to say that some parts of Springtrap's character are directly inspired by themselves. Kind of makes things even worse when I tell you about the actual contents of the screenshots I mentioned. Speaking of those, we should probably start getting into that. Yeah, I can't discuss the content of this in good conscience without providing an appropriate warning as well as a disclaimer. These screenshots are rather old, and Quinn was a minor at the time, 16 to be exact. They're not really on the internet much anymore, however, even if you probably can't find them in many places, do not send any harassment towards this person or even harassment towards the victims involved. Going out of your way to leak personal information or harass someone because they were a bad person seven years ago just makes you look like an asshole. It's important to hold people accountable, but we have no way of knowing if Quinn still exists exhibits these behaviors. And I don't think that leaking personal information or overly harassing someone is okay in any context, especially if this person isn't online anymore. Please be polite in your discussions. This video is to inform, educate, recontextualize, and clear up misinformation. It should serve as a definitive source in giving justice to anyone involved, not the beginning of a harassment campaign. If you're uncomfortable with any of the topics on screen, please proceed with caution or skip the rest of this video entirely. 
So, Springtrap, right? Springtrap and the barely 14-year-old girl. The aforementioned father-daughter relationship. Yeah, uh, so the creator really liked to draw them and roleplay as them in romantic and sexual relationships that were extremely violent and often non-consensual in nature. Yeah, absolutely disgusting. Now, because I know there's going to be at least one person who's gonna say something like, oh, but it's just fictional, they're just characters, it doesn't hurt anyone. First of all, shut up. It's still weird and I don't like you. And second of all, Quinn, at least according to people who were close to them at the time, tended to be very manipulative and would often intentionally or unintentionally guilt this person into doing ERPs with them, all while having the power of a popular and respected artist in the community at the time. So if you think that's okay by any means, shut up. I double don't like you. For a lot of people, this information is probably very disheartening, especially considering how much this comic meant a lot to people back when it was first released. Even I enjoyed it a lot when it first came out. So, a lot of people's first thought upon hearing this information is, oh, well, the creator was a bad person, but at least I can still enjoy the comic and separate it from the artist, and I really, really wish that was the case. But the actual contents of the comic, knowing the information we know now, are also sickening and disgusting. The relationship between Springtrap and Delia is disturbing to say the least. Springtrap is manipulative, abusive, and downright ill-intended. As we saw beforehand, and noted down at our red flag count, there are many scenes where he calls Delia cute and says stuff such as, that's my girl, or my Delia, which is so disgusting looking back. While writing the script, a document with the information I'll be talking about was created and posted somewhere online. I'm sure it's pretty easy to find, but please be cautious when looking for it. There is suggestive art, although not super graphic, however the actual messages are pretty disturbing, and shouldn't be read if anything like this upsets you in the slightest. There are a few screenshots that I won't be mentioning here, but just be wary that they include graphic depictions of these topics. Now, these screenshots are from around seven years ago. Quinn was 16 at the time. Somewhere it was spread that they were around 18 or over, and people began calling them a PDF file, which is just plain misinformation. That doesn't make what they did any bit okay, but it's important to take this into note, especially as the people who I've spoken to about this, who were directly involved, said that they don't know if Quinn has changed or not, as they haven't had an online presence in years. However, Quinn has gone on record to say that they dislike the ship around 2020. This could be genuine and show they've changed over the years, or it could be a lie. Even if they have changed for the better, I feel it's still important to bring these things to light, as the content shown in the screenshots all occurred during the comic's creation, meaning that the creator of the comic actively romanticized this relationship during its run, making the comic itself appear a lot more disturbing. All that in mind, let's take a look at these screenshots. From what I can gather, these are all conversations with a single person who I'll take to nicknaming D, like Delia. These screenshots date back to July 21st of 2017, which doesn't sound like too long of a time ago, but no, no, this was almost seven years ago, Jesus Christ. Quinn comes into D's DMs admitting that lately they've been shipping Spryia a lot, the ship name between Springtrap and Delia, and joking about the fact that they had written a fanfiction depicting the two earlier. Next screenshot depicts Quinn asking what they should do, to which they ask if they should draw more Spryia. D questions what they mean by more, to which Quinn says that they draw ship art of the two often in their notebook. They ask D if they want to watch them draw Spryia, to which around 40 minutes later, they send this art, depicting Delia laying on top of Springtrap's torso. It's not super disturbing per se, but it's still really gross. It's just not nearly as bad as the stuff we're going to get into. The next day, Quinn wakes up to a thunderstorm, complaining about a multitude of things, but saying that it's okay because at least they have Spryia. This is where we get into the role-playing screenshots, oh god. <laughs> the first screenshot isn't anything explicit, but still reads grossly. I'm in love with you. I really am. Springtrap whispered, half hoping Delia would sleepily interpret it as a platonic declaration of affection, like he usually meant it. He couldn't bring himself to tell her, not yet, not fully. No, she might get weirded out. This is the only screenshot from the 21st. The screenshots starting on the 22nd begin with Springtrap kissing and cuddling Delia, admitting that even though he knows it's wrong, it would be nice if they could just stay like this forever. He then proceeds to ask Delia if they would ever want to go further. The next message we see is Springtrap telling Delia she doesn't need to express it, although I am unsure of what he was referring to here. Quinn then writes about Springtrap being unable to contain himself. Gross. More gross shit is written about them kissing, and later that day, the roleplay starts to take a turn for the worst. Springtrap starts to discussing how he isn't, um, well, you can just read these screenshots. Soon after, the conversation between Springtrap and Delia turns nothing short of disturbing. Springtrap starts to yell at Delia, screaming about how she can't leave him as he grabs her tightly by the arm. He starts having a mental breakdown and Delia begs for him to let her go, saying that she'll always love him. Springtrap claims that she has a lesson to be learned, something that he says throughout the comic itself often. In this context, it's much more disturbing, however, as the conflict, instead of turning violent, turns violent and rather inappropriate. 
Springtrap tells her to stop crying, and things become absolutely unapologetically disgusting. I'll be heavily censoring these screenshots, but regardless, look at them with caution. You can tell what's going on here. It's incredibly upsetting. Fasting forward to the 25th, and it's just more gross stuff going on. Great. Quinn sends another, more disturbing, and possibly the most explicit of their drawings. I have no words. It's disgusting. The most disturbing of these screenshots, to me at least, is a conversation between Delia and her father, Nick, that took place on the 26th. Nick is comforting Delia as she's upset over something that happened with Springtrap. Nick asks her if he, uh, did anything inappropriate, to which she then further comforts her and explains why what Springtrap did was unforgivable. This is just weird to me, as it proves that Quinn was specifically romanticizing the unhealthy, illegal aspect of Springtrap and Delia's relationship, to the point where they would also roleplay as Nick, explaining how deplorable of a person Springtrap is in this situation. There are a few other screenshots spanning until the first and second week of August, most notably another lovely drawing from Quinn. Great. But as for the screenshots, I'm really done with having to look at these. A lot of people would say that these screenshots were faked, but it is incredibly hard to fake an art style this well. And also, I have been in contact with the victims of the situation, and yeah, uh, I'm just gonna say, saying that these screenshots are fake is completely invalidating to them and their feelings, and I hope that they are doing so much better now that they are away from this person. I mentioned earlier that Quinn was, as described by their old friends, very manipulative at times. In this screenshot, Quinn gets upset by Dee not being able to continue role-playing with them. From the looks of it, Dee seems really uncomfortable here, but Quinn acts very upset, and Dee immediately gives in to them. One of Quinn's older friends at the time, who was also close with Dee, claims that Quinn was very manipulative at the time. They would often text the group chat claiming that they would hurt themselves and get hurt whenever anyone wouldn't give them attention. Now, these actions, as well as the actions relating to the shipping of Springtrap and Delia, are absolutely not okay. However, it's important to understand how a person can be influenced into these behaviors. None of what they did was defendable. However, Quinn is now in their 20s, having been 16 at the time. Two years after all this went down, they stated that they disliked the ship, saying that it was very uncomfortable for them. So it's more likely than not that they've changed over the years. A 16-year-old exhibiting these behaviors is honestly more concerning than anything. More often than not, these behaviors are shown within victims of trauma, especially trauma that occurs at a younger age. To call people like this seven years later irredeemable monsters, or even going as far to insinuate that they're a genuine criminal, doesn't make you any better of a person. From what I can tell, Quinn is off the internet, which is the best possible outcome for both them and the people they've affected in the past. This, to me, shows improvement. Neither I nor the people that Quinn were close to know where they are now, as well as where they are mentally. Obviously, it's possible that Quinn still does exhibit these behaviors, but there is no way of anyone knowing whether they do or not. The point I'm trying to make here is that Quinn should not be labeled as an irredeemable, horrible person now because of the awful things they did then. I'm not making this video to start a witch hunt. I'm not making this video to defend Quinn. I'm making this video to recap the events of a nostalgic comic in a new light and to inform. I know I keep repeating this, but I need to make it clear. So what is there to be learned after all of this? Don't be weird? Adults and children being in relationships together isn't okay, even if it's fictional? Don't guilt people into role-playing with you? Well, yes, these are all good takeaways, and I agree with all of them. But I think I would give you two words to keep in mind leaving this video. Be civil. Be civil in your discussions both regarding Quinn, Dee, or any other victims. Be civil towards Quinn now rather than threatening them or ruining any chance they have in a normal life. Be civil in the comments. Be civil to each other. Be civil to yourself. Be civil to all the wonderful fans of Springtrap and Delia who have taken the comic as their own, and reclaim the art while condemning these actions. And of course, be civil to me, and respect my boundaries. If you're okay with this kind of stuff, or are a pro-shipper, or lollycon, or whatever term you people use to describe yourself, I would like to respectfully ask you to maybe not watch my videos. Obviously, I can't force you to, but I just hope that this helps you know that I don't like you, and I don't want you here. Ever. Sorry. Despite these actions, the comic of Springtrap and Delia is still beloved by many, either because they separate the art from the artist or are just unaware. I hope I was able to bring light to these actions and the situation, and hopefully was able to inform people on what this comic is, what the creator did, and where we are now. On the FNAF fan comic front, they are still very much around to this day. Springtrap and Delia was one of the first of the most popular ones, but several extremely popular FNAF comics would follow suit, to the point where there was a fan comic that blew up in 2020, and it was genuinely more popular than FNAF itself on websites like TikTok, becoming somewhat of its own thing. Man, I have so much to talk about there. Oh, but- but you don't care about that, do you? No, 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 certainly not my bad. Well, as far as this video goes, I think we have reached our natural conclusion. As always, thank you so much to my Quina fans over at Patreon, especially. Jivin2008, Synetic, DCT6113, Loose the Goose, Rube72, TalkboxPNG, Maxwell Fusion, The Blue Guy, Dags, Spammy, Floofy Band, 
Banjo, ML Spence, Squeaks de Corga, and Just Sam. Thank you so much for sitting through this one. Your support means more than you could ever know. Thank you for watching. I've been Quinnaman, and thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. <laughs> Bye! Kitty, sit now. <laughs> <laughs>